Divrei Hayamim Bet, Chapter 20. Some time later, the people of Moab and the people of Ammon with other Ammonim came up to fight Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was told, A huge army from beyond the Dead Sea, from Aram, is on its way to fight you. Right now they are in Hatzatzon Tamar, that is, Ian Gedi. Jehoshaphat was frightened, so he determined to seek Adonai. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Yehuda, and Yehuda assembled to seek help from Adonai. They came from all the cities of Yehuda to seek Adonai. Standing in front of the new courtyard in the house of Adonai, among those assembled from Yehuda and Jerusalem, he said, Adonai, God of our ancestors, you alone are God in heaven. You rule all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and strength, so that no one can withstand you. You, our God, drove out those living in the land ahead of your people Israel, and gave it forever to the descendants of Avraham, your friend. They lived in it, built you a sanctuary in it for your name, and said, If calamity strikes us, such as war, judgment, disease, or famine, we will stand before this house, that is, before you, since your name is in this house, and cry to you in our distress, and you will hear us and rescue us. So now see, the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, so that they turned away from them and did not destroy them, are now repaying us evil. They have come to throw us out of your possession, which you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, won't you execute judgment against them? For we haven't strength enough to defeat this huge horde coming against us, and we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All Yehuda stood before Adonai with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then in the middle of the assembly, the spirit of Adonai came upon Yachziel, the son of Zachariahu, the son of Benaiah, the son of Yeiel, the son of Matanya the Levi, from the descendants of Asaph. He said, Listen, all Yehuda, you who live in Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, here is what Adonai is saying to you. Don't be afraid or distressed by this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will be coming up by the ascent of Tzitz, and you will find them at the end of the Vadi, before the Yeruel desert. You won't even need to fight this battle. Just take your positions, Yehuda and Yerushalayim. Stand still and watch how Adonai will deliver you. Don't be afraid or distressed. Tomorrow go out against them, for Adonai is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, while all Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before Adonai, worshipping Adonai, and the Levi'im from the descendants of the Kahati and the descendants of the Korki stood up and praised Adonai, the God of Israel, at the top of their voices. The next morning they rose early and went out into the Tekoa desert. As they left, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Yehuda, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Trust in Adonai your God, and you will be safe. Trust in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting with the people, he appointed those who would sing to Adonai and praise the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army, saying, Give thanks to Adonai, for his grace continues forever. Then, during the time when they were singing and praising, Adonai brought a surprise attack against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come to fight Yehuda, and they were defeated. What happened was that the people of Ammon and Moab began attacking those people who lived by Mount, Mount Seir. They set to work slaughtering one another. So when Yehuda reached the watchtower overlooking the desert, they looked toward the horde, and there in front of them were corpses fallen to the ground. None had escaped. Jehoshaphat and his army came to take the spoil from them, and found among them personal property in abundance, and corpses with precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves until they couldn't carry any more. They took three days just to collect the spoil. There was so much. On the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Barakah, blessing, where they blessed Adonai. Hence that place is called the valley of Barakah to this day. Then they returned, everyone from Yehuda and Jerusalem, with Jehoshaphat leading them joyfully back to Jerusalem. 
for Adonai had caused them to rejoice over their enemies. They came to Yerushalayim with lyres, lutes, and trumpets, and went to the house of Adonai. A panic from God was on all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard that Adonai had fought against the enemies of Israel. So Jehoshaphat's rule was a quiet one, because his God gave him rest all around. Jehoshaphat ruled over Yehuda. He was 35 years old when he began his reign, and he ruled 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azuvah, the daughter of Shilki. He lived in the manner of Asa, his father, and did not turn away from it, doing what was right from Adonai's perspective. Although the high places were not taken away, and the people had not yet set their hearts toward the God of their ancestors. Other activities of Jehoshaphat, from beginning to end, are written in the records of Yehu the son of Hanani, which have been inserted in the annals of the kings of Israel. It was after this that Jehoshaphat joined up with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who was acting very wickedly. He joined together with him to build large ships capable of going to Tarshish, they made the ships in etzion Giver. Then Eliezer, the son of Dodavahu from Merashah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, Because you joined yourself with Ahaziah, Adonai is wrecking your project. And the ships were wrecked so that they couldn't go to Tarshish. End of Second Chronicles chapter 20.